and here we're going to have a look at how to present your photographs in a very smart slideshow so people can sit back and enjoy them as they show one by one on their screen um, or as an email attachment perhaps or just on a DVD even. So to do that what we're going to do is go to the create tab, click here and pop down to slideshow. We've got the organizer here with all our photographs in so if we just click on slideshow we get the slideshow preferences window. Now there's lots of all singing, all dancing, bells and whistles you can add to the slideshow but that can distract from the actual contents. You don't want your photographs to be panning and zooming around because that will change the composition of them. So if you spent time composing the shots to get the composition perfect you don't want it to be zooming towards the screen and changing that very important composition. So as photographers you want to get things as simple as you can. That means clicking as least as possible in these boxes and you don't want to crop them either so don't click here to try and fill the whole screen with a landscape picture or a portrait um, because again it's going to spoil your composition. So just keep photo captions as text if you like you can type in captions to explain what the photographs are or if the photographs want to speak for themselves then turn this button off like so. It's a bit of a debate about fades and transitions but we can deal with that a bit later I'm just going to click OK now and that pops the slideshow editor and already I'm screaming in horror at the, um, the sheer repulsiveness of these cartoon animals. You do not want to add these to your photographs unless you're seven years old. So ignore this section here, maybe we can hide them. Go away. Uh, okay, we have to add some photographs first before we can start editing other things. So what we need to do is click here and choose the pictures we want to add to our slideshow. You can see Elements is sometimes aimed towards um, not some professionals perhaps, but maybe the more amateur in uh, certain ways, like these horrible things. Sorry, I'm being distracted. Let's move on. OK, let's take some landscape shots here for our slideshow. I'm going to click to add some of the landscapes I want to share. I'll scroll down and have a look at some of these other images here. Yeah, that looks good. All part of our landscape slideshow. Nice lighthouse there. Portraits and landscapes. OK, and one more, like so. OK, when you're done, uh, you can click Add Selected Media, and you'll see they pop up along the bottom in this timeline. So let's click Done now for the moment. As well as the horrible animals, you've also got backgrounds. If you click here, you can see those. But again, we don't really need backgrounds because they're going to distract from the photographs. The photographs should speak for themselves. Now we've got a timeline with transitions. Let's see how that looks by clicking play. It's a 40 second slideshow. We've got five seconds for each slide and you get to a transition and there you can see the next shot appearing. Now these transitions are dissolves or fades. They're the classic timeless way to go from one image to another without it being cheesy. But if you want cheese you could click here and choose something like waterfall let me just go back to the start now and have a look at that. But again, that's going to be more distracting. People are going to be thinking, oh, nice transition, instead of, oh, nice photograph. So I would recommend hitting pause, going back here, and then just sticking to the traditional fade. You could even have no transitions at all and let the photographs just appear one by one by choosing none. And you can click apply to all if you decide to go that route. But I'm going to let us get away with a fade for these particular shots. Now I'm planning to keep my slideshow very simple, but if you did want to have a bit of rostrum style camera work on there to zoom in and out, then you can do it. Click on the slide you want to edit, go to enable pan and zoom and you've got a start and end point. Let's say we're going to start wide but end with a close up. You can then just click and drag to zoom in and what will happen there is when you click um, play, it will start and zoom in like so. So it could be a little bit cheesy there. I don't really like that but at least the option is there if you want it. I'm just going to click stop, click on here and then untick enable pan and zoom and we're back to the photograph in all its glory. So I'm pretty happy with the slideshow I've got but you could add narration to the slides if you liked. If the slideshow is going out on a DVD and you want to actually explain what each shot is or you could add text as well using this option here but I'm going to keep things plain and simple. I don't need to add any music to the show either. I just want it to speak for itself. So I'm ready to output it. I can save it as well to make sure that it's editable later and then come and tweak it. Um, but if I'm happy, click here 
and I can view a variety of output options. For example, if we saved it as a movie file, that would keep all the zooms and the pans and the transitions quite happily intact. But if you go to PDF, it's something you could email more easily, but you might find that most of the transitions and the pans and the zooms will not play back. But that's not necessarily a problem because you just want to show the photographs to friends in a certain order, and that will do the job nicely. You could also burn the file to a disk, um, like a DVD that's been attached to your computer, or you can export it straight to TV, um, either in PAL, which is the British format, or NTSC, which is American. And if you've got a nice widescreen telly, you can choose this option here, and then you'd obviously connect your computer to the telly and click OK and play the slideshow directly from Photoshop Elements. But in this case, I just want to send the file to a friend or a colleague, so save as file. I'm going to do it as a simple PDF. I'm going to keep the size fairly small because I want it to be emailable, but you could go for large if you fancy. Click OK and it will then pop it into a folder. I'm going to do a landscape slideshow, like so, into the My Pictures folder. I could change the location to the desktop to make it easier to find. It's going to be a PDF, which is a portable document format. Click Save and it's now going to build the PDF file, which I can then attach and email to a friend. Let's just import the slideshow into Elements as well so we can look at it from within the organizer. So that's how to create a simple PDF slideshow. I'm just going to save the project and label it as a landscape slideshow so that we can come and edit it later if we need to. And we can then close the uh, slideshow editor window and it's added the new slideshow to the top there like so. So click OK. And we've got two icons here. This is the editable slideshow we can come back and tweak whenever we like. Here's the PDF we created, which we also saved to the desktop as well. If I double click on here, it will open up in Adobe Acrobat. Let's just go to No, we don't want the full screen. Um, but here is our slideshow, and you've got eight images. You can just click and move them one by one and see the shots in that particular slideshow, and that can be emailed to friends or colleagues. So that is the finished result. Very simple, no real transitions going on there, but it is doing the job of presenting your photographs as they are. There's no cropping going on, so you've got some borders, especially when you've got a portrait shot, but that's fine, because people want to see the shot as it was composed by you. So that's how you share your shots as simple slideshows. In the next video lesson, we're going to look at ways to share your photographs online in website galleries. And we'll show you some free website galleries that you can upload to from within Photoshop Elements Organizer and also upload directly to sites like Photo Radar, where you can get comments and ratings from other photographers.